What up everybody? Back again with our negative number unit. Today we're going to be ordering rational numbers using absolute values. So let's dive under the water and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to order rational numbers based on their absolute value. We've been doing a lot of ordering and comparing rational numbers, but we're using their actual value. Today we're going to be looking at absolute value as we order them. Here's a type of question we have been doing. We want to order these numbers from least to greatest using their value. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to put them on the number line. So I have positive 5, okay? I have negative 6, I have 1, I have negative 3, and I have positive 2. Okay, so I'll just, I won't label them, I'll just have it right here. So if I want to go from least to greatest, that means I'm going from left to right, right? The further you are to the left, the smaller your value is, and the further you are to the right, the greater your value is. So if I want to do this using an inequality statement, I know that my furthest to the left would be negative 6, and that's going to be less than negative 3, which is going to be less than positive 1, which is less than 2, which is less than 5, and 5 is our biggest number because it's furthest to the right. Now using a different color, I'm going to show the absolute value of each of these numbers underneath. So the absolute value of negative 6 would be 6, okay? The absolute value of negative 3 would be 3. The absolute value of 1 would be 1. The absolute value of 2 would be 2. And the absolute value of 5 would be 5. Again, the absolute value is how far they are away from 0. So my purple inequality statement is comparing the values of them. And my black inequality statement is comparing the absolute values. Now, when I look at the absolute values, are they in the correct order? And the answer is no, because 6 is not less than 3, right? 3 is not less than 1. Matter of fact, if you look right here at the negative numbers, I can see that my negative numbers are backwards of what they should be, but my positive numbers are exactly correct. Okay, so I would have to flip my negative numbers and put them in different spots, but my positive numbers are correct. Again, that's because absolute value is always written with a positive form because it's showing us how far away from zero the numbers are. Let's take a look at this visually. So here we have the exact same integers as before. We're still going from least to greatest, okay, except we're going to be looking at the absolute value of them. So the first thing I want to do is I'm still going to put them where they should be, okay? So I had positive 5, right? I had negative 6, I had negative 3, I had 1, and I had 2. But if we're comparing the absolute value, we're comparing their distance away from 0, not how much they're worth. So I'm going to do this visually with arrows so you can kind of see what we're doing. All right, so if I start at 0 and go to negative 6, that would be right there. Okay, if I start at 0 and go to negative 3, it'd be ooh, right there, kind of crooked. Let me fix that. If I start at 0 and go to 1, it would be right there. If I start at 0 and go to 2, again, I'm showing the absolute value because I'm showing how far they are away from 0. And if I go from 0 to 5, my line would be about right there. Now, when we're comparing the absolute value, let's compare the lines to see which line is the smallest to the longest, right? Least to greatest. So I can see that the smallest one would be my one. Then I would have the two would be my next smallest one. I'm gonna run out of room, so let me move these up a little bit, okay? Then I would have my negative three's absolute value right there. My next shortest one would be my negative five, and then I would have my negative six to be my longest one. So when you're comparing the absolute value or the distance away from zero, you can visually see that one has the smallest absolute value. So I'm gonna put one right here, and that was less than two, which was less than negative three, okay, which was less than five, which was less than our biggest one, which would be negative six. And again, I should probably put the absolute value symbol around each one, but I ran out of room. Because when you're comparing the absolute value, you're comparing how far away from zero it is. Now the shortcut for this would be to just write the absolute value of each number. So you could have positive one, two, three, five, and six, and then you could just compare the numbers like you've have like you have been your whole life, and that's the shortcut. But before we got to that, we want to conceptually show you with this visual model of comparing lines 
what's actually happening when you're comparing absolute value. Again, the key thought is you're not comparing what the numbers are worth, you're comparing how far away from zero there are, which leads us to our key thought. The further you get away from zero, the greater the absolute value. No matter if you're going to the left or to the right, if you're going negative or positive, as you get farther and farther away from zero, the bigger your absolute value will be. Let's take a look at an I do problem. So for our we do problem, we want to order these rational numbers, again, using their absolute value, right? So not their actual value, not what they're worth, but how far away from zero they are. And I'm going to do it from greatest or furthest away from zero to least or closest to zero. So again, I'm going to use the same strategy. I'm going to write down the absolute value of each of these. So the absolute value of five and a half would just be five and a half. The absolute value of 9 fourths would still be 9 fourths, except I'm going to change this to a mixed number to help me kind of visualize it. So that would be 2 and 1 fourth. All right. The absolute value of negative 2.5 or negative 2 and 5 tenths would be 2 and 5 tenths. The absolute value of 3 and 9, negative 3 and 9 tenths would be 3 and 9 tenths. And the absolute value of 5 tenths would be 5 tenths. Now that I've made them all positive, it's a little bit easier to compare them, maybe without drawing a number line. So the furthest away from zero would be five and one half. So that's going to be my greatest number. And again, you could draw a number line to help you if you needed to. The next one would be three, because three is my biggest whole number left. So I have three and nine tenths. The next furthest one from zero, let me cross these out as I go, would be two and five tenths, because that's equal to two and one half, which is bigger than one fourth. And again, what I'm going to do is I forgot, I'm going to write down my original number, so the absolute value of that. So this would be the absolute value of negative three and nine tenths, and this would be the absolute value of five and one half. The next furthest away from zero would be nine fourths, okay, because nine fourths is two and one fourths, okay, so I'm writing the original number right here. Then the next closest, sorry, I should have been saying closest to zero as I get to the smaller numbers. The next closest to zero, there we go, I'm done with that, would be zero and five tenths, okay. Now I've ordered these absolute values from greatest to least. If you're ordering their actual value would be different, but again, we're focusing on ordering the absolute value, which means we're going from furthest away from zero to closest to zero. If you are good with these and you understand what's happening, then you are ready for the challenge zone. And I'm very excited about the challenge zone. Let's go ahead and read it before you try it. It says find a set of four non-zero integers, okay? Now remember, integers are whole numbers, okay? So no fractions or decimals, they have to be negative or positive whole numbers, that their order and the order of their absolute value are opposite, okay? So if you need a hint, go back and rewind to your first conceptual problem when we showed the numbers in order of their value, and then we looked at when we did the absolute value, what changed? Okay, go back and rewatch that if you need some help. If not, go ahead and push pause, solve it, and then push play to check your understanding. Hopefully you just paused it, now you're checking your understanding. Now there are many, many, many different combinations of non-zero integers where the order and then the order of their absolute value are opposite. But the thing they all have in common is all four of them have to be negative numbers. So let's just do the first four. If I have negative four, that's going to be less than negative 3, which is less than negative 2, which is less than negative 1. But if I do the absolute value of them, 1 is closest to 0, 2 would be the next closest to 0, 3 would be the next closest to 0, and 4 would be the furthest away. So when you did the absolute value of these negative numbers, they become positive, right? So no matter what you did, your four integers had to be negative because the absolute value of negative numbers is always written as a positive because it's telling you how far away from zero it is. So if you did any four negative numbers, then the absolute value when you order that would be the complete opposite of it. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate you spending your time with Instructive Beats. 
We know there's lots of different options. We hope that you will comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Like the video. And if you haven't already, so subscribe and join our Instructor Beats family. Again, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Instructor Beats, out.